Good Monday morning. It is conference talk show time. My favorite day of the week, Tom. I know, me too. And I missed last week. I was on vacation. Well, we got to to see you shortly. I did. For those who didn't see last week's episode, we played another episode of Where in the World is Tom Singer, where I just came in for like two minutes up front and said hello from uh, Mount Shasta, California. Which uh, I followed Tom on Facebook. Here's a big surprise. Looked like a beautiful trip. But here's the thing. We have a fabulous guest today, so I want to get to it right away. In the theme of the conference talk show, bringing cutting edge information about the meetings industry from meeting professionals and professional speakers, one of my favorite people in the entire universe is here to join us today. She is, she's back. Yes. Uh, It is always fun to have uh, guests return, especially when they have something new to say about what is going on in the meetings industry. Patty Hendrickson. CSP is one of, she's a jewel in our association. First, as a member of the Wisconsin chapter of the National Speakers Association, Patty is one of our leading members. And she was one of our excellent MCs at Influence 2021. We're planning 2022, so now I get a little confused. (laughs) She has taken her... She has taken her expertise and in leadership into this virtual hybrid world and is leading organizations and associations to be able to deliver high quality content, whether people are together in person, together at different locations, or fully virtual. I can't wait to hear what she has to say. Please welcome back to the conference talk show, Patty Hendrickson. Woo! Hello, hello, hello. Good to be All back. Right. Okay, Patty. Thanks, thanks uh, for being here. Tom, Patty, I think, is here to drop some truth bombs for today. Uh, because yeah. she said... And some, and some people don't like truth bombs, so get ready. Get ready. Buckle up, people. Uh <laughs> How are you feeling about the virtual world, Patty Hendrickson? Uh, I will share with you that pre-COVID, I had never done a virtual event. I am not a techie, so it was the last thing on my list to ever learn. I will tell you now in 2021, I have discovered numerous revenue streams that I never Mm. would have found. And if I see one more speaker say the word virtual and roll your eyes, I just (laughs) could come to blows with you. Virtual's here, either learn it or don't disparage it because it's a vibrant part of our businesses that we need to embrace. And if it's not just your natural embrace, figure out how it can fit in your mix because it can fit in your mix if you start thinking out of your old model. Mm. Yeah, so she said it nicer. Before we got uh, before we got going, she's like, quit your complaining people and get on board. Uh, so I think that's true on both sides of the equation. It, it, this was a tough transition for a lot of professional speakers. It was also a tr- tough transition for our event professional colleagues like you know a lot of people had to sort of like suck it up and try um, as we went through 2020 now there are a lot of people are like I can't do another virtual event what's your advice there why should people be embracing this in terms of delivering content to their participants First, we just have to say, this is reality, and Mm -hmm. this is how people are going to get the information. Either you're going to be good at it, learn to bring your talent and let your talent be good in that arena, or you're missing out. Okay, Mm -hmm. the, the, the first two things that you've got to do is, first and foremost, the virtual audience comes first before the in person. And you got to talk with the client to figure out what's the template of this event. Um, Hybrid shows up in many ways. People throw that out. And most people have one or two templates in their head of what they think that looks like. Um, I I generally have three. I have one where there's a large in-person and then there's a handful of virtuals. 
or two, there's um, I am virtual and there are in-person people, okay? Or I am presenting virtually to all virtual, but in that mix, there are large, what I call collectives. Some people call it mm. a watch party, but that sounds yep. too, too social for me. The, okay. the collectives and the virtual where they're individuals. And that is my favorite. And you can have so much fun with that. So, so those are, you, you've got to figure out what is, what does the template look like and how are the people seeing and hearing the information? If I'm in a collective, I'm, I'm in this mixed group as well as seeing the virtual speaker. I think there's a fourth one too, where you're presenting live to a room of people. And then there are collectives around the country as well. Cause I'm talking to one client right now and that's exactly what they're doing. They're having four pods of like 150 people spread around the country. And then one pod with 400 people where the speakers mm. will actually be. So it becomes all of what you yes. just said. Precisely. I do a lot of leadership teams and last, last year they would often be live, but because of COVID protocols, they'd have to be in different rooms for the spacing and I was reaching them all. So it, you are spot on, sir, spot on. And it's not stopping, it's continuing. For sure, for sure. So you have become an expert on this. I like the idea of the collective as opposed to the watch party because it's not intended to be a passive activity. How do you make sure that you, know, you have some people in person, you're working with them, and then you have somebody in Idaho, there's you know 30 people in Idaho. How do you make sure that those people in Idaho are getting what they need? Well, it, it starts out with a client conversation. And if you mm. have a tech crew, that's cool. You, they're in the mix too, because you need to set up what it's going to look like. Um, mm. If I'm going to have virtuals, whether that's you know a dozen or four or 500, we have to have monitors in the room, whether you're on a main stage, you have a big screen behind you, or I ask that we have at least two 55 inch monitors in the room somewhere up front so the in-person people can see them, okay? and. I'm going to step to the the magic that I found that works for me um, because my business is built upon I show up already having people who like me and want me to be there. And mm. if we have time, I can tell you how I make that happen. But pre-event, I have the meeting planner who all usually trust me, um, share their emails with me. I send all my virtual folks as well as in-person folks an email to gather information and, and have a conversation ahead mm -hmm. of time via text message or email. They're the experts. I want to learn from them. But before the event, um, they get an email, the virtual folks, and I say, you need to show up at least 10 minutes early, okay? Because you and I are going to have a conversation. I can't wait to meet you. I'll be there. So before the event, and I have it structured that there's always a camera on one of the monitors. Um, I'm often mm. in just a large ballroom, and I'm very interactive, so I'm moving around a lot. I want them up front so the audience, in-person audience, can see them, but on one of them needs to be a camera. And whether I'm in my office, I've got two big 55 inch monitors here. I do the same thing live. I want to see their faces and I mm. need the audience to see them. And when that camera is mounted on the monitor, I speak with the in-person people behind me. So they see the whole conversation. It's not like they're the subset, the stepchildren off to the side. They're the mainstay. And when they come on in that morning, I get I nuzzle right up to the, the camera and I'm like, hey, I'm so excited you're here. This is awesome. Oh, I hope oh, all the information you shared in the emails with me were great. I've incorporated a lot of those things and you'll hear your main name mentioned probably three or four times. But let me tell you the truth about today. Um, some of you might have not tidied up your space behind you or maybe threw on a sweatshirt and you might want to put on a shirt because we really want you to be here live. Um, this is, we want you to be on camera because this is your, your participation is so important. Um, the only thing, the only difference between you and the people in this room, when we're all done, they have to drive home. You don't score. <laughs> and when you are here, they're only going to meet you see behind me all those round tables they're going to be sitting with six or seven other people that's all they're going to meet you all are going to meet we've got 75 people on on the virtual feed today 
you're going to meet at least 15 people today in breakout rooms and conversations, and it's going to be fun. So you're going to meet more people. And truth be told, I bet they're going to miss some of the fun you're going to have. And just to mm -hmm. set this up really well, before we get started, if you have a blank sheet of paper, if you'll make this placard about yourself with your email, whoops. There you there go. go. Keep going. There the other way. <laughs> yep. There you go. There you, okay, go. there you go. I put this up right like this. I say, make one of these right now because in your breakout rooms, you'll be meeting people you want to follow up with. And this is the magic. Take a screenshot when you're in the breakout rooms and then you could follow up with one, one another. And then oh, I say, that's okay, smart. so shut off, your cameras, shut off your cameras now, you know, brush your hair, brush your teeth, whatever you need to do, go get a glass of water, but I'll see you live in a little bit and nobody else will know the conversation. Um, and oh, by the way too, at least three of you on the virtual feed will win $25 Amazon gift cards. So be ready and, and be listening because it could be you. <laughs> And then I walk away and I, and I start the whole show. I'm introduced just like normal. And then the second the introducers finish, the audience is clapping. Yay. I go straight to that camera and I say, Hey, virtual folks. Nice to see you again. Uh, the, the other folks joined us. So, and, and, oh, everybody in person, would you all welcome the virtuals? And they're waving at the camera. So they're the first ones. And I have one person in the client mix, whether that's, you know, planning committee person, the client herself or himself, who is always watching that monitor. Cause I get busy and sometimes I forget it, but if they ever raise their hand or say anything, they get first dibs to be, mm -hmm. to speak. So that's how I set up and, and I'm kind of silly. I'm all engagement. So this works great for me, but that pre-conversation with them, when they show up early, mm. they like me. I like them. I already know a bunch of their names. It's really fun. And, and they just get in, they get in the system and they feel like they're a part. So that's, that's, that's the biggest nugget I wanted to share today. That little pre-con piece is so important. So I, like I loved what you said <clears throat> with, with the, having that pre-conversation with the at-home audience. I don't think I've heard anybody do that before. So that mm -hmm. is like a really unique idea that I think all speakers and all planners should be listening to. The other thing you said that resonated with me, and, and I can speak for Eliz with her too, is you talked about the fact early on when you were chatting that the at-home audience is not a second-tier audience. If you treat the virtual audience as a second-tier audience, you're going to have second tier results. So you need mm -hmm. to elevate that. And Eliz and I started hosting hybrid events over eight years ago, which is so weird in this current world that anybody thought about hybrid events eight years ago. But the whole purpose, mm -hmm. the, the original impetus of the conference talk show was don't just leave them to watch passively, but create something that was more engaging, more interactive, more like being part of the view or the today show mm -hmm. so that the at home audience felt like they matter not just watching a live stream, you've taken this even farther. So what else do you do during the speech to engage that at-home audience without discrediting the in-person audience? Right. Mm. Well, the first person from the virtual, um, and let me back up real quick too. I never say live audience mm -hmm. and not live. Mm -hmm. I call my people in the room with me in person and those people on the monitor are virtual. And I met usually in the right after introduce, I usually say something like, if you are in a chair right now in this room, you are live. If you're in a chair somewhere else, you're live. You're filling your box. People are filling their energy. And, and you talk about everybody brings their special to the meeting and we have to have space to share that, which, which that's to me very important. But this is something that uh, it just happened one day and I've used it uh, every event now and I don't know where it came from. Somebody probably shared it with me, but um, it, it worked. When we come back, I have, I always do engagement. Um, I'm the mm -hmm. best speaker when I do the least amount of speaking. That works for me. That's how I built my business. Um, when I have them go in breakout rooms or have them have discussions at the round tables, when we're finished, I say, I know you just heard fantastic things. And I bet there's something really, really special that when you heard somebody else say in your group, you went, oh, if you heard somebody else say something that made you go, wow, or ah, oh, would you please raise your hand? Let's hear it. And I go to the monitor first because I want to hear from them. So they're sharing good things that other people said around the camp, the breakout room campfire. And once they do that, the, the ice melts and I get conversation mm -hmm. from that room all day long. And I usually say, I shout out my email to them and I say, 
um, email me back and I'll send you all my books. Uh, it, so right away, it's a, a reward thing. It's fun. And it's we make it playful. And then what happens too in the, in the breakout rooms I'm in, I diffuse those few folks who like to hear themselves talk a lot when I have them share what somebody else said. Mm. So in honoring somebody else... And often those meek folks in my in my group that would never raise their hand and share, no matter what the industry, you always have a handful. Um, they get the, the 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 spotlight on them, and it it's just magical. And I don't know why it works; it just does. So that's that's the the nuance that I share in that moment with those folks. I like that, and you know we've all faced the. Uh, you know, don't hand the microphone over to that person because you're never getting it back. It's also hard, you know, when they're, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter whether they're in person, almost said like, uh, in person or virtual, it, it's the same problem. And I love this idea of asking, what did somebody else say? It really creates a different kind of conversation because it's like, yo, here's what I think. No, Sally was amazing. Um, I love that. I'm imagining when you're talking with clients about, no, 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 really, we could have people in Idaho and we could have people in California and we could have people in, you know, Montana. I don't know why I'm on the western part of the United States today, but I am. Uh, How do you get them to be comfortable with the idea of having these things happening out there where that meeting professional does not necessarily have the same control over what's happening in that room is as they might in, you know, a ballroom or a meeting room where everybody is contained. I've done this a lot <laughs> and I, 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 I have dozens of people on a list that if it's a similar program and I, and if I feel hesitancy, I say, you know, Nikki Sue or Marta, these are two names that who know my work and have thrown wonk and wonky and weird things my way. They'll <laughs> explain to you how we made it work. And, and, you know, and, and again, my business model is different than most other people's. I don't, I don't get exciting about chasing, chasing a sale. Cats, no. I, my goal when I, after I'm done speaking, before I leave, I want to be hired back either next year, two years. Mm. Some clients, every four years I show up and I've been doing that for 25 years. Um, I like them. I don't want to work with people I don't like. Mm. And it's, it, mm. likes, it fits my lifestyle. But, but, I, but I say that, so I have this big list of people who will say, Oh, oh no, it's okay. Or, or I understand that. And, and you need to have those kind of cheerleaders in your, you know, in your arsenal. If you don't have those, create those. Actually, when you're done, if you do a, a virtual event, which I always have a, a post con conference call with a client and I say, pick out the two best things that happened today. What, what, what would you say worked great? And I extract those. And then I mm. send an email to them and I say, this just happened with another, Mike, this is what you said about the day. Um, c- could I could I capture this and put in some promo materials? I'm not planning anything right now, but in the future. It goes in a file. So I have that right there. So I've got seeds I can pull out that could, could answer questions that come to me. But because again, I'm doing virtual. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, hey, Hated would be an understatement of what I looked at this when we started. I do not like technology. Um, now, I mean, I literally produce and host from 9 a.m. to 4.30 giant events of 1,000 plus people out of my office, which is crazy. And when we're done, I always have a little poll done, a little Google form of eval piece. And I, at one of the questions I was asked, this event that was predominantly virtual, was it worse as expected, better, much better. Those four things. And consistently, I get nothing in the bottom two categories, always the top two. Huh. So, and, and that's a good um, criteria or a good eval piece to include if you're trying to mm-hmm. not sell, but to, to win somebody mm-hmm. over that. Just because we can't be all in person, we can still make it work and be effective. And, so, oh, Patty, when you this have- is another little tidbit that I want to include though. When you're doing the collectives, maybe you've got, uh, you know, a hundred people, 
two rooms are collectives, okay? And they, so all day long, they're working together. I often do giant long events, or the, predominantly they're together. What happens is those in-person people, they start to get jealous of everybody else uh. who always gets to be in breakout rooms. So now, before the day starts, I have, I put in a little email, because they always have a little um, uh a checklist that I send stuff to them. And I say, always bring your charged cell phone or a laptop if you're able. Because I say uh, two thirds of the way through. Now I'm noticing that some of you in the collectives, you kind of would like to meet some of the other people who are joining us on the virtual feed. And if that's the case, we'll take a vote for the last two breakouts. But if you have a device with you, um, let's see if that can work. So usually the last two times, everybody, and they come back and then they're all smiling like, yay! <laughs> So Patty, when you when you when you have the collectives that are in Idaho or Montana, as Melissa <laughs> said, do you ever Which, have anyone in that do you ever have anyone in that room who is like the moderator of the collective who is sort oh. of your eyes and ears of the room? Oh, Tom, brilliant. Yes. And actually when I do a large events, when there are many, many, many collectives, um, like a big fall conference at, at multiple sites, I have them pick one or two meeting moderators. And mm. I have a huge checklist set of a snack bar i mean all these things the, the sound has to be right how to set the camera how to move the camera at different times throughout the day so we see different people but the biggest thing is at least two weeks prior we have a specific event called the meeting the meeting moderators um meeting where all the meeting matters from all these collectives are coming together so and, and i get them in breakout rooms we have fun blah 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 but i educate them of how to run the room so I have mm -hmm. minions in every collective that know what's happening. And they also have my cell phone number so they can text me a message if they need to reach out like, oh my gosh, or we lost our feed or, you know, or, or there are some places in the country where, you know, I live in the bluffs of Wisconsin. There are nooks and crannies where a, a signal just cannot be consistent throughout the day. So the reason, the reason I bring that up is next month, I have been asked by another speaker who is coming into a live meeting virtually. They're gonna be remotely actually from another country and they're coming mm. in to do a meeting and they've actually brought me in because the event is taking place in the city I live in. They're actually bringing me in to be the eyes and ears of the event, to be the facilitator. And we're having conversations about what I need to do to make sure I'm doing exactly what that speaker needs. And at the same time, because I'm a big personality and I'm a speaker, what not to do to not, you know, make it the Tom show. And it's actually a wonderful conversation about how do you facilitate a virtual event in a live room with a speaker coming in from overseas and having a person in the room who can keep that room engaged. And it's mm -hmm. a whole new it's mm -hmm. a whole new thing. Yeah, and and that person role the checklist includes things like you're the chat box scribe, you're the poll taker. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those pieces that come into play, as well as having them mix up that collective needs to change seats if more than an if it's two hours at least two times they need to change seats so they're sitting by somebody they didn't sit by before because just that mix of the room you start to get the cluster groups and if i'm left out and not by a real close friend i, I need to feel the feel the collegiality not like i'm just this you know this person stuck in this room with these other people uh i think that is probably the the biggest reason that people should work with Patty Tom is this <laughs> depth of understanding of how to do this right how to actually make this work in satellite places I love the term collective I love the way you know when you were emceeing for influence you were you were on everybody to go to that virtual audience first to really engage with them. And Tom, I think, yes, is it time? I love this is my favorite part. And this doesn't happen every single episode. It doesn't. But I love it when this happens, because every now and then Eliz and I run across people who have gone above and beyond the call of duty in the last 18 to 20 months in helping the meetings industry make this pivot to be able to embrace what's going on in this world of hybrid and virtual. And Patty, you have gone a long way to going from, ooh, I hate the idea of talking into a camera to being able to go in close <laughs> and share the love with the virtual attendees. And for that, Eliz and I would like to name you 
a conference hero. Yay! Awesome! Well, that's so cool. Woo-hoo! The conference, the conference hero award, is something Eliz and I dreamed up to be able to share and reward with people in the meetings industry, be it speakers, be it planners, be it other vendors who really have helped other people across this really rocky road that we have been on for the last few years. And you have joined the company with some really amazing people who have been making a difference in the world of meetings. So, Patty, cheers to you. Yay. And you will be receiving a one of our coveted, I still can't do this right, coveted conference, conference hero, hero mugs. mugs. Um, and uh, thank you so much for being a leader in our industry and serving the our meeting professional colleagues so well throughout this whole time. And I can't wait for when she comes back, Tom, because I know there's going to be something, another layer here of what Patty is able to deliver for her clients. So, so Patty, everyone who's watching right now, they, they wish they had the coveted conference hero mug that you now will have, but with everything we've talked about, do you have any final word of advice for planners out there? who want to do these mix up collectives, in-person, virtual, what's one thing more that they need to know? Most of the events that have been off the charts, fun and spectacular, something has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's the place where there's, oh no, and people rally around, they make it work. And there's just this collegiality elevation that happens when we stumble and we all pick it up and we go on. So don't be intimidated by it. Be be like inspired that let's do this. We can do it. Let, let we can show them. Yeah. Um, and ultimately you're, you're saving people time and energy when you, when you take it on and you say, I, I got this. Um, and if anybody, I'm part of an essay, I'm, I'm the cheerleader for our chapter, <laughs> uh, literally, uh, if anybody would like to have a conversation about this, um, if, text me, email me, You're, I'm more than willing and welcome to, to talk through some challenges that you have. All right, thank you so much, guys. I love you both. <laughs> we love you too. And if a client, a meeting professional, wanted to get a hold of you, where is the best place to find you? <gasps> the best place to find me is, uh, I, <laughs> oh, you're so, so how'd you know I was gonna do that? PattyHendrickson.com. There we go. That is it. Patty at PattyHendrickson.com. Everybody should reach out if you want to learn more about how to embrace this wild ride of, of collectives, lives, hybrid, and virtual all coming together at once. So, Patty, thanks again for being here with us on the Conference Talk Show. Thank you. And we'll be back next Monday. Ooh, we're going to talk about live events. And we are. Yeah. So join us next Monday at 11 o'clock Central Time on, uh, you can find us at talk, conference talk show dot live. That's us on Facebook. All of our episodes are available on YouTube at conference talk show dot watch. And if you would like to find out how you could work with Eliz Green or myself to be your conference talk show, if you're doing a hybrid event and you want to be able to engage them, we can be your MCs for the live in person and the virtual. And together we can mix it up because Two MCs are better than what? Two MCs are better than one. One, so absolutely. So talk to Eliz and I. You can find us at conferencetalkshow.com. And if you want to learn more about everyone who's been awarded the Conference Hero Award, go to conferenceheroaward.com. And you can nominate somebody that you know that has gone above and beyond in the last 22 months, whether that's a speaker, a meeting professional, a vendor, your production company, your hotelier, all of it counts because we're all in it together. Patty, thank you so much for being with us again. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for being just the wonderful you. And we'll see all of you next week. Uh, Until then, have a great rest of the week.